praise the Lord and uh, welcome to tonight's uh, podcast. This is Dr. Flo coming to you live from a WAVN, A Voice of Victory. And uh, in today's uh, lesson, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the divine perspective, the ability to see circumstances as God sees them. Hallelujah. So that is the title of our podcast tonight, Divine Perspective, the Ability to See Circumstances as God Sees Them. And our scripture reading is going to be in Colossians chapter number one. And we're going to read from a verse, uh, we're going to read verse number nine. And we're going to start in the King James Version. And the Bible says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, so we're going to read also in the Amplified. Uh, you know, I love the Amplified. So we can go ahead and read that in the Amplified. And uh, the Bible says, for this reason, since the day we heard about it, we have not stopped praying for you, asking specifically that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom, with insight into his purposes, and in understanding of spiritual things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, I also love uh, what the message translation says. It says, uh, uh, through a thorough understanding of the ways in which God works. Hallelujah. So one of the greatest keys in living in total victory is having the ability to see circumstances as God sees them. When your vision is limited to only what you can see in the natural, then it's not likely that you'll be able to persevere or endure when the heat is on. Today's pressures often seem impossible to overcome. And we're living in some strange times. And because most of God's people have never developed what I call divine perspective, they have become victims instead of victors. The Apostle Paul told us that in the last days, we would be faced with what he called perilous times. And that he mentioned in 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 1. And in the Amplified Bible, it, it says, perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. So if you have never, if you never learn how to develop divine perspective, then you'll eventually become discouraged and you'll finally give up. Divine perspective is simply the ability to see circumstances as God sees them. Things look a lot different when you're looking through God's eyes. Hallelujah. So as you know, we live in a negative world that focuses only on the negatives. As a result, most people grow up with a negative mindset. That's why so many people are depressed or full of anxiety. And you'll be surprised at the number of people that you run into every day that actually have no hope of a better life. Without the ability to see as God sees, life can look very, very bleak. That's why you and I should be different. Not just so our lives will be better, but also so that we can be a ray of hope for others. The Apostle Paul tells us in his letter to the Roman Christians, in Romans 15 verse number 4, that for everything that was written in the past, was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Hallelujah. So constantly reading, studying, and meditating the word will cause you to have a different viewpoint from the rest of the world. 
you'll have a different outlook and perspective than they do. It's when we fail to spend time, quality time, in the word, that we tend to lose our perspective and become negative again. Problems will start looking impossible and hopelessness will try to overcome us. But if, we, if we'll maintain our fellowship with God and with his word, then we'll always be enthusiastic and have a positive outlook about everything that we're going through. The original word for the word enthusiasm is a Greek word meaning God in or the ability to see God in every situation which in turn makes it exciting. That's exactly what happened to the Apostle Paul when he was in prison facing death. Instead of being discouraged, he saw God in his situation and declared in Philippians chapter number 1 verse 12 that my imprisonment here has had the opposite of its intended effect. And that's in the message translation. And the same in the message translation, uh, he went on to say in verse 19 that I'm going to keep that celebration going because I know how it's going to turn out. Hallelujah. So how could he be so positive? Because he had learned to see life's circumstances as God sees them. He had divine perspective. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you and I have divine perspective, then we are able to see what others cannot see. An example is that the eagle can spot a small fish jumping in a lake as far away as five miles. Flying at an elevation of 600 feet, the eagle can spot an object the size of a dime moving through the grass that is six inches tall. In other words, he sees what others cannot see. That's what happens to us when we spend quality time with God and with his word. In Romans chapter number 10, verse number 17, the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing by the word of God. So the more of God's word that we put into our hearts, the sharper our vision will become. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. So did you notice the phrase, things not seen? Only those who have developed the ability to see as God sees can fully understand what this means. You could say that we have been given a third eye. It's called the eye of faith. Hallelujah. And in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 5, verse number 7, that's why Paul says that for we walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. And in the Amplified, it says, not by appearance. Praise the name of the Lord. So in other words, what we can see with our natural eyes does not dictate what we believe. In 2 Corinthians 4, uh, Chapter number 4, verse number 18, the Bible says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Hallelujah. That is what I call divine perspective. Hallelujah. Through the eye of faith, we can see ourselves winning even when it looks impossible. We can see ourselves victorious even when when defeat seems inevitable. This is what Joshua and Caleb had that the other ten spies didn't have. The other ten saw failure, but Joshua and Caleb saw victory. In the book of Numbers, chapter number 13, verse number 28, and also chapter number, uh, verse number 32 and 33, in the NIV version, the Bible says, The people who live there are powerful, 
and the cities are fortified. All the people we saw there are of great size. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. So they became so discouraged that they were convinced there wasn't any other way they could possibly win. But listen to what Joshua and Caleb said. In Numbers chapter number 14, verse number 9 in the NIV, Joshua and Caleb said, Do not be afraid. We will devour them. The Lord is with us. So in every thing that we see coming ahead of us, if only we can learn to say, I am not afraid. I will devour them. The Lord is with me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So if we learn to say that the Lord is with us, we will devour them. We will not be afraid. Then we will be victorious. Hallelujah. And isn't it amazing how God's people can be facing the same problems? And some will see failure and others will see opportunity to prove that the word of God still works. When you have God's perspective, then you cannot be intimidated by adversity. Like the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter number 20, verse 24, you'll be able to boldly declare, none of these things move me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is a statement that I really love. None of these things move me. So this is our time for more breakthroughs than we've ever experienced before. However, If you are constantly moved by what you can see in the natural, then it's unlikely that your circumstances will change. Make the decision today that from this point forward, nothing, and I mean nothing, will rob you of quality time in the word. Do what Lester Sumrall used to say. Feed your faith and starve your doubt. And I quote that again. Feed your faith and starve your doubt. Hallelujah. So breakthroughs are coming your way. And I hope that you can see them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So we have come to the end of our podcast tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you do not know Jesus Christ Please repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I pray, Lord, as I open my heart, that you will come into my heart and you will be Lord over my life and Savior over my life. I repent of my sins and I pray that you forgive me my sins. Erase my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. From today, I declare that I am born again and I give you my life, that, Lord, you will take it and do something magnificent with it for the glory of God in heaven. I pray also that you will guide me to a good Bible-based church where I will learn your word, where I will learn the deeper mysteries of the kingdom of God, where you will place the right shepherds in my path who will teach me your word and guide me in the way that I should go. I also pray that you will fill me with the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit may also teach me all things and guide me in my Christian walk in the way that I should go. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for saving me. And as of today, I declare that you are Lord and Savior over my life. Help me to walk and live a life of victory in you, Lord Jesus. In your holy name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And thank you so much for uh, praying that prayer of salvation. You are now a new creation. Behold, the old is gone. And don't let anyone remind you of everything that happened in the past. Because as of today's date, you are a new creation. Behold, everything is brand new in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And I thank you for tuning into the podcast tonight. And uh, if you got born again in this podcast, uh, send me an email. And my email is drflo at drflo.org. That is D-R-F as in Frank, L as in Larry, O as in Oscar, at D as in David, R as in Robert, F as in Frank, L as in Larry, O as in Oscar, dot, O as in Oscar, R as in Robert, G as in George. Thank you so much and you have a wonderful and pleasant night. And remember, there is power in the word.